Hey guys, Mrs. D here. This is another video. This one is on the ideas of optimal assignment and weighted bipartite graphs. So, so far, and from previous videos, all we've shown is what bipartite graphs look like, um, and that is graphs with nodes in two separate groups joined together across groups. Now, because those edges were not weighted, they didn't have numbers um, representing time or cost or any other measures, these were actually just preference problems, as the graphs only indicated relationships um, with no weights on those lines. So one connection was not numerically better than any other, so you couldn't really do any optimization. But our topic is leading towards optimization of these graphs, optimization of assignment of tasks. So as soon as edges have a weight to them, connections can be assigned optimally according to objectives such as minimizing costs, minimizing time, maximizing profit. So once a problem has been represented with a weighted bipartite graph, this information should be represented in a matrix with rows representing one group of vertices in the graph and columns representing the other group um, of vertices in the graph. And then the edge weightings make up the numbers that fill the cells in the matrix. So if you're not familiar with matrices because of certain math subjects that you've done, it's not that difficult. It's something that you could catch up very quickly just through um, seeing an example. So the main gist of this video should be converting a weighted bipartite graph to a matrix representing that info. So the following bipartite graph shows the time in seconds for swimmers A, B, C and D on this side to swim 100 metres in the different strokes, backstroke, breaststroke, butterfly and freestyle over here. So those are the two groups making up the bipartite graph. All swimmers can swim each stroke, but um, the weights indicate how long it took them to swim 100 metres. So therefore they've got some swimmers faster than others in certain strokes. So um, we've got a series of questions here to help us um, see what it's like um, interpreting information from this weighted bipartite graph and also um, give us a chance to represent this bipartite graph with a matrix and then one other opportunity to use trial and error to see if we can just do a basic optimization of that matrix. All right, so question A, who's the fastest at backstroke? How would we work that out? Well, this is the backstroke node and we need to look at these weighted lines to see who has the lowest number. So A swims backstroke in 56, B swims it in 62, C swims it in 55, D swims it in 58. So the lowest number was 55, which was swimmer C, C at 55 seconds. Who's the fastest at breaststroke? So we're looking at this node and looking at all the different swimmers. So A swims breaststroke 59, B at 67, C at 64, D at 60. So our lowest time is 59 with A. A at 59 seconds. Who is the fastest at butterfly? So I'm in this node here. A is 52, B is 59, C is 58, D is 54. So A is once again the fastest. A at 52 seconds. Okay. Who is the fastest at freestyle? So looking at this node, 53, 49, 51, 48. So D is the shortest time. D at 48 seconds to swim 100 meters. Construct a matrix to show this information. So this is the main gist of this um, of this video. It should be the construction of this matrix. So it doesn't matter which way you do it, but rows represent one of the groups on the bipartite graph columns represent the other group. So I'm going to do the rows representing the swimmers, B, C, D, 
and the columns representing the strokes B A, B R, B U, and F R for freestyle. I'm going to draw lines here to just help um, line things up. So A to B A is 56. A to B R is 59. A to B U is 52. A to F R is 53. So you can see what I'm doing here is looking at the swimmer to the stroke and then looking at the line weighting that is between that swimmer and that stroke. So A to B A is represented by this line here and has weighting 56. So I've just put the number in there, okay? So I'm going to do the same again for swimmer B. B swims bass stroke in 62, um, breast stroke in 67, butterfly in 59, freestyle in 49. C swims backstroke in 55, breaststroke in 64, butterfly in 58, freestyle in 51, and D swims backstroke in 58, breaststroke in 60, butterfly in 54, freestyle in 48. So that is our matrix. Let's show this information. Use trial and error. So that was E. F. Use trial and error to assign the swimmers to each stroke for the best, lowest overall time for the team. So we are going to learn techniques that will do it, um, will assign the best swimmers for the lowest overall time, so minimize. Um, in a foolproof way, but we are just doing it trial and error. We're going to try certain things um, to see if we can get the lowest time. So I'm just going to go with um, give fastest swimmer their best stroke. I'm just going to go with that because that would solve the problem, basically. That's going to be an issue because we have a swimmer that swims two of these um, strokes the best. But because we're doing it trial and error, we'll give it a go anyway. All right, so A is fastest at butterfly. So how about we just give it butterfly? B, we don't have B being the fastest in anything, so we'll leave it for now and um, choose the next best alternative um, once we've decided everyone else. C, we give backstroke because it's fastest at that, and D, we give freestyle because it's fastest at that. So the only stroke left would be breaststroke B, and B does breaststroke in 67 so what is the total time here? A, butterfly, 52. B, breaststroke at 67. C, backstroke at 55. And D, freestyle at 48. Grab a calculator and see how long that is because we are trying to minimize the total time of um, swimming by assigning these tasks optimally. Add 55, add 48, 222. Okay, that's trial and error, but I know for a fact that that not, is not the ideal time because we have some alternatives here. B swims freestyle at 49 seconds. So if we assign B freestyle at 49, we'd only be lose um we'd only be gaining one extra second, but then D could be freed up to do something a lot better. For example, doing breaststroke seven seconds faster than B was doing. 
All right. So let's try that trial and error. What if we gave B freestyle and D instead of freestyle because B is doing it now? D do a much better job of backstroke, um, breaststroke than B was. What is that total time going to be? A is 52 plus B is doing freestyle now, which is 49 plus C backstroke 55. But now D doing breaststroke 60 equals 52, add 49, add 55, add 60. 2, 16 seconds. And we could go over and over again. Obviously, we've only got limited time with um, a video, otherwise it would be too large. If you messed around with this, and eventually if you do the um, mathematical methods of um, finding the optimal technique without um, without any question, all right, not trial and error, you'll find that this is the optimal solution to minimize the time. Um, that's an example of dealing with um, multiple optimal solutions with one of the alternatives, but looking for the next best alternative, which does give the the minimized solution. Okay, so that's just a taste of what we're going to do eventually using proper steps and a mathematical formula. Well, not a mathematical formula, it's called an algorithm, all right? So hopefully that helps you out. The main gist of this should be the generation of this matrix and the idea of weighted bipartite graphs, and I'll see you in the next video.